Good day, folks. My name is Sid. Welcome to my pool heater repair video. I decided to make a couple of these around the house type of repair job videos. And if you like those or are interested in them, uh, please click on the like button and the bell on top so you'll be notified when there's a new one. I plan on doing several others around pool repair and also one of my uh, favorite hobbies, home brewing beer. So today we're going to tackle my problems with my Hayward water heater, pool water heater. So let's jump right in and get started. So the backstory here, folks, is that I had a great Craigslist find on this Hayward pool heater. I got it about a year ago, and um, basically the short version of the story is a poor, poor bear guy pulled a good working heater out of a, a pool, replaced it with a new model, and he had it to sell. So I was able to pick this pool heater up for only $300 and had great success with it all year last year. But then I noticed that I started to get some really um, loud clanging noises uh, as the pool heater was kind of winding down. So I did some research on it, looked a lot on the web, um, these banging and clanging noises caused by um, lack of water flow through the heat exchanger tubes. So um, I did that, looked around and found that there are actually two uh, by the way, this is a Hayward model HD 400 IDL2 that we'll be working on today. So, look through the manual, and I found the two things that control the heat are right in here. So, you have this thermal control valve here, and then this bypass insert plate. Uh, I guess the two kind of completely block the flow or let it bypass around. Um, so, I was interested to find out uh, which one I needed to purchase to repair it, so I pulled uh, this unit off of the heater and found that actually both of them uh, were pretty badly damaged, and I'll be showing you that here when we, when we go to pull it off. So Alright folks, here's a look at the actual heater itself and the workspace that we have to work in. Um, a couple of things I want to say right up front is I'm not any kind of authorized technician. Um, if you do any of these repairs, just make sure you keep safety in mind and if you do have any kind of warranties, uh, you know, understand that the uh, authorized technician is who you'd want to have. In my case, this thing's been working fine for quite a while, so the point is just to uh, get it fixed again, right? So I uh, want to shut off all your power, obviously, and then uh, shut off your gas as well. And then the first thing that you need to do is um, to remove the panel screws here. You can see I've already removed this panel right here. And then uh, next we'll be removing uh, this panel uh, right here. The screws are already out, so let's take that guy out. Now, um, these little screws uh, nuts, I should, should say, can be a real bugger. Uh, you probably can't see it, but one of them fell way down there. So be very careful when you're uh, putting these things back on because literally to get down into there, you have to remove this whole thing. So now that I have uh, this panel removed, I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen these up and uh, move the heater unit itself so that you can actually uh, see get a better picture of it okay verify that those are all off so now I'm just gonna go ahead I got red there I got purple here take off this other one and then I have blue and purple so I guess purple is always the last okay now we got those we can just kind of set them out of the way here um, and then as I mentioned this one piece there is gonna have to come off so uh, next thing I'm gonna do is open this front panel here and there's really just a couple screws to do that. This one. And that one. Okay. That was a loud noise. So, right back there, that guy needs to be removed. It has a temperature uh, sensor in there that uh, gets inserted inside so I uh, will have to back that out so again just to mention there's two uh, nuts here this is the only one that we're gonna need to remove to free up that temperature probe the other can stay 
uh, in the manifold itself. Okay, so once that's removed, you can pull the inside here and just slowly pull this guy out. And there you go. That's all you need to do for that. You can actually leave these other wires on there. So, so now I'm going to go ahead and start taking off all of these nuts all the way around the manifold so that I can get it off. Okay, folks, now I've got that off. A couple of things important to know is um, various different places on this unit, it's very difficult to get the nuts off. Like right here, you can't use a, you have to use either a short socket or a wrench to get it off. And then on some of these on the bottom, they're very difficult. I had to use an extension on my ratchet. Um, and I couldn't just use my little speed drill to get it off. So depending on your unit, mine's got a flexible hose uh, connecting the gas up. Uh, you know, if you are not able to do something like that, it's gonna be very difficult to try to get to all those little uh, units or nuts. So, go ahead and pull this off. And you can see the parts we're dealing with here. Uh, you can also see where the uh, nuts fell down in there. I got one that's stuck down in there. It's gonna be a little difficult to get. But anyway, so these are the parts right here. And uh, you can take a look at how rusty that is. It's uh, you know pretty rusty all together. I don't know how much longer this thing will last me, but it's worth fixing now. So, first thing on this guy here, you'll notice that uh, I tried to soak this in some cleaner because this was just all completely rusted up. Uh, what they say to do to test this thing is to put it in 120 degree water and when you do this uh, spring uh, pulls up and it allows uh, some flow through there. So I did that as a double a test with a new one and the old one. The old one failed. The new one works just fine. So you can kind of see the differences here. This one also cost me like, so you can really see how much of a flimsy versus really beefy setup that is. We also have these little parts kits here to replace uh, that right there. And so uh, that'll be the next thing, next step we do. I'm going to go ahead and remove this temperature sensor right here. You know, I know I said you don't have to and you don't, um, but just to be able to show you guys uh, the rest of these parts. So, okay, now that I got that off, you can see here you got this spring and then this uh, washer like piece. Obviously, it's not going to go through this hole. Um, these to unscrew and then I'll show you what the uh, inside looks like on that. So what I'm going to do now is remove this guy right there. Alright, so this is a piece when you get it out, you uh, unscrew this and you can see here the spring, my spring was broken, but you can also see, look at all these grooves from the spring just wear into this thing over time. So. All of that is going to be replaced with this. So, all right, interesting thing on this piece is unlike the other one, there's no stopping point on this end, it's just flat so I guess it takes into account connecting into the back side of that piece so I'll go ahead and uh, install this one down here uh, just like okay so now that's all installed and I guess you can see right here this plastic piece here is keeping this thing in uh, makes it much easier to screw this thing in and get it all in place so that's looking really good so now we're gonna go ahead and place our valve here thermal valve and then we're just gonna go ahead and set this top piece you can see how it's got a little cutout for it right go ahead and place that and it actually fits very nicely there's a little notch there and of course it has the groove right here that it's fit in and then it fits very nicely there okay so actually it fits in the other way upside down and uh, so now that's in there. The other, the way I had it before, this was sticking up too high. So um, we're also going to replace this 
um, gasket right here with a brand new gasket so that uh, it'll seal up all nicely. Okay, okay folks, I've got the gasket replaced. You can, I don't know how well you can make this out on here, but this old one is super flat. And I noticed that at one point in time, I was getting uh, some water leaking out of here when I had the spot isolated. Uh, so, got the new one in, got some uh, sanitary gel lubricant on it. And so now we're ready to uh, reinstall this thing carefully so as not to lose any of those nuts. Okay, folks, so I've got it back on. I don't have any of the uh, nuts tightened yet. I just did place one right there just to hold it in place. Um, my recommendation is you start right over here, though. It's kind of hard to see, but that one is very tough to get on with this thing in the way. And uh, I almost cross started the thing, and that would have been a real pain. So, um, And then all the ones on the bottom because uh, obviously if that falls down it's tough to get to uh, hard to get it out so i would start with those uh, first and then uh, back out to do your top so that's what i'm going to do next okay guys it's all back on now i'm going to go ahead and reinsert the this temperature uh, probe or whatever piece this is into there because that was a little tricky and uh, get that tightened up and then I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, temperature probe back into there and when I do because I'm going to have to really tighten way down on it I'm going to go ahead and kind of pre-wind this guy up so that uh, so that everything uh, there's not too much strain on the wires there all right back to you in a second okay guys so you can see I've got the, that back on nice and tight this back on nice and tight so now we're just going to put up the wires And there, I remember we said uh, purple was on bottom, so purple and blue, and then here, purple, then red. And then just try to fit these boots back over here as best you can. Make sure it's as watertight as you can make it. Okay, so one other thing I forgot to mention to you earlier, you're gonna wanna tighten, tie these guys back as far as you can because your metal piece is gonna come down on top of this and you don't want it to, to come in contact or crimp your wire by any stretch. So anyway, the thing I was gonna tell you guys, if you're gonna do this, I'd also probably just consider replacing your O-rings here. Um, you know, these guys here are fairly new. I had to buy this high heat uh, set here and they came with new ones. So it's, it's only, you know, like a year old. Uh, but, you know, if it had been sitting around for a while, I definitely would consider replacing that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this uh, connected back up and uh, you'll see in just a second. All right, folks, this, uh, Important note here is this bottom panel goes on first. It's got this little lip for that top part to come over. Only uh, three screws to hold that guy on. And next to the top. Also, side note, folks, is this little area right here, there's a groove in the metal for to fit these wires into so that they don't get crimped as well. And now it's just a matter of tightening it all down. All right, folks, I'm back again. That was literally the hardest job on ball is getting those things threaded back on. It's uh, very difficult, but uh, got them back on. Everything reassembled, sides on, fronts back on. So now we're gonna give it a go here. Flip on all of our power. There we go. So pull first. Set this thing in spa mode. Turn up the temperature a little bit. I'm going to put it at 90. You hear it fire up? And then the way she goes.
So between the last video and this one, I did a test on it. And it took me about 40 minutes to get it from 58 degrees up to 92 degrees when the, the spa is isolated. So I'm going to give it another uh, test here, but as you can hear, no banging or clanging. So it seems to have fixed that. Thanks everybody for watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks. Bye.